Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'd been working a yard work job all morning for a friend with just a gorgeous permaculture garden that needed some work pruning in her food forest. And I realized when I got home that I forgot to take the coffee grounds out this morning to the compost. So I thought I would talk with you all while I'm doing this about my methodology for composting. If you follow my Facebook page or have watched some of my older videos, you might know that I don't use open compost bins. I don't use traditional cold composting methods. And I can get into that in another video. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, there's a lot of reasons that I don't do that. So instead I employ other various techniques for dealing with food and paper waste in our house. And I thought I would discuss one of those ways with y'all today, as long as I'm taking the coffee grounds out. So in permaculture, we talk about having a closed system. A closed system means you don't have to import products and you don't have to export waste in order. Oh, I have a child visiting me. Hi, George. Okay, sorry about that. I had to do some parenting. So as I was saying, when you have a closed system, it means that you are not using energy in the form of carbon, um, petroleum-based energy. You're not using any of the captured and stored energy to ship your waste off-site and deal with it. You are taking your waste and you are utilizing it as a resource on your property. So when we think about our recycle going out, that has to get put into a bin, driven in a big truck to a facility. Water and heat are used to turn that paper into recycled paper. So recycling is great, but the three R's are reduce, reuse, and then recycle. So if I can reduce the amount of paper I'm using, that's fantastic. If I can reuse it in some form, that's also great. So I view this as a way of reusing paper, as turning it into compost. So I don't have a perfect closed system. We obviously use the um, waste pickup. We have garbage every other week. We use a micro can and we do use recycling. But I try and keep as much of my paper on site and deal with it here as I can. So this is my system here in this sheltered area next to my horseradish facing full north where um, it's not in the blazing sun and the wind can't get to it back here is my vermiculture system. So what is vermiculture? It is using uh, Acidia fetida, which is the red wriggler worm to take your garbage and turn it into compost. So Let's look at it. I, I have a really simple system and maybe I'll make a video showing y'all how I, I made this bin, but it's made of two storage tubs. You can see I'm really, I'm super highly organized since so all my storage tubs are really labeled. This used to have baby clothes in it. And as my kids got bigger, I took this tub and there's a tub underneath it and a drill and I made my worm bin out of just free stuff in the basement. You can buy worm bins online. They can be quite spendy, but they're very simple do-it-yourself methods of making them at home. So I have the storage tub and inside this is my worm bin. So like I said, my red wrigglers, they take my paper waste and some of my food waste and they turn it into just gorgeous black rich compost very quickly. Here you can see some of those red wrigglers going to town. So what kinds of things can you give them? You can see here shredded office paper is a big one and we don't actually get that many bills in the mail anymore. So some of my friends who own businesses and have business mail, I get their shredded, get their paper and I shred it, okay? Another big one is, is coffee grounds, like I said, and the filter goes in and the grounds. Things like toilet paper rolls. If you use paper towels or brown paper bags, those also work. If you can cut these things up or shred them, you increase the surface area and that makes it easier for the worms to feast off of this bounty, okay? So shred it up and they will break it down more quickly. What other kinds of things can you feed them? You may have seen videos on red wrigglers, they love bread. 
So if you have stale or moldy bread that you can't use up any other way, give it to them. Mine almost never get bread because if I have bread that's become rock hard and I can't turn it into croutons or something, I tend to soak it and feed it to the chickens for a treat. They love banana peels. They love carrot peelings, apple skins, things like that. There are two big things you really don't want to give your red wrigglers, and that is citrus, because citrus contains a compound called limonin that is toxic to almost all species of worms. So um, let me dig down in here and show y'all. So these red wrigglers in here actually get poisoned by citrus. So you don't want to put it in there. I bury my citrus in the garden if I am all done you know, using it in the house. After I juice my lemon, I use it as a scrubber to clean my bathtub, stuff like that. Um, they also don't like things in the allium family, so no garlic or onion skins. Those also I bury in the garden. So this compost is odorless because it's mostly paper. They can ha handle much more brown matter than a regular compost bin. It's almost all paper and coffee grounds and banana peelings, and it doesn't smell like anything except soil. So this makes a worm bin, which you can see here, just a storage tub size, something that's feasible to do in an apartment. It's easy to do under your kitchen sink. Now, when we look at our red wriggler worms here, you're gonna see these guys are already gonna try and find their way back down underneath. They do not like sunlight. That's why they need a closed opaque container. So the farther you dig down into the bin, the more worms there will be. Ta-da. Now, red regular worms don't exist in the soil here. You need to buy them. Or if you are following the permaculture ethic, number three, share the surplus, and you live in Portland, Oregon, and you would like to come get some red wrigglers for me, I am happy to have a no contact drop off on my front porch and you can come get some because there's no reason to buy this product if you can get it for free. I got my worms to start my worm bin for free from a friend. Now, when you do a worm bin, there are some specific things to be careful of. It can get too dry for the worms if you're using a ton of shredded paper and not adding damp coffee grounds and banana peels. So sometimes I need to put a little bit of water in here um, and just moisten the paper a little bit and then they're much happier. Also, you can't keep them outside in super cold conditions. So that's one of the reasons this is in a sheltered area, but also right out my back door is that if we're gonna get down 20 degrees or below for extended periods, Fahrenheit in Portland, then um, this goes in my mudroom and that just gives it enough extra protection. Some worm bins are built into the ground to add additional insulation and that's great. But for me, it's easier just to have it be mobile and to drag those worms um, into the mudroom for a few days if it's gonna be real cold. Now the worms don't like sunlight, as I said, so there are some great techniques online for how to separate the worms from the finished compost. Look at all this finished compost. I have to come and remove. I have tons of it. They produce two products. One is this beautiful black compost, and the second is they produce a lot of moisture. And so at the bottom is a bunch of liquid, which is why I have two tubs together. There are holes in this, this first tub and the liquid drains out and that is called vermiliquor and it makes a great fertilizer if you dilute it one part vermiliquor to nine parts water and use it as a foliar spray on your plants or pour it right on, on the base of them. So they produce those two products. Um, really not very much maintenance for these guys. Twice a year I separate out a bunch of the worms and I either feed them to the chickens or I give them to friends to kind of reduce the population because they just boom and then I, I empty out the um, produced um, compost. So I find this is a fantastic way to use up paper which most of our paper here um, now is free of uh, harmful uh, heavy metals and uses soy ink so it is safe to use in your compost and I just think it's a great way to to work on that permaculture concept of a closed system for energy efficiency oh we have a little we have a little surfid fly coming to visit us here a little mock bee probably enjoying the moisture on the coffee grounds so yeah let's work on that 
concept of having a closed system, it's great when we can think of our closed system on many different layers, the closed system of our property, and then a bigger system of our community, um, our greater community. But if I can prevent having to ship things off site and waste carbon and water and um, kind of reduce how much, how many steps go into the process of of um, using up our paper products, then I think that's a really good thing and I wanna keep trying to do that. So that's a look at my worm bin. Hope that helps give you an idea of how I diversify the ways that I make compost. And um, if you are interested in learning more about vermiculture, there's a great book called Worms Eat My Garbage, which I can't show y'all right now because I loaned it to my friend Molly. Um, because she started a worm bin this spring. I'm super excited about like anybody who can get into vermiculture. I think that's awesome. So check out the book, Worms Eat My Garbage. Um, and definitely consider exploring this method of reusing, composting, closing your system and having more efficient permaculture. I'll be back soon. I'm gonna go get some yard work done in my own yard this afternoon and I will have more for you all later this week. Thanks.